This is a terrific meeting because uh, we have both scientific advances and uh, discussions about what this means clinically. We have uh, clinic staff here uh, from all of the muscular dystrophy uh, clinics across the country as we think about how we're going to implement these really complex therapies, how we'll manage their safety, how we'll share information about uh, the challenges of delivering these you know, potentially life-changing but complex therapies in the coming years. It's an exciting time though to be a neuromuscular physician. Just a few years back we didn't really have prospects for meaningful therapies and now we have a lot of different ones to particularly impact Duchenne muscular dystrophy and spinal muscular atrophy. The real game changer in our field was the approval of, uh, of a viral gene therapy for spinal muscular atrophy which absolutely has changed the natural history of that disease. Now in Duchenne muscular dystrophy we have the prospect of a similar, similar scale of advances for, muscular, for, for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Although, interestingly, we have, we have many more approaches to meaningfully work toward uh, re-expression of the dystrophin gene. Um, so well, it's been great at this meeting to hear the latest on each of these and to be involved in presenting some of that data as well. So despite the success we've had so far with spinal muscular atrophy, there's still a lot of challenges. The full safety and efficacy profile for the newest gene therapies for Duchenne muscular dystrophy is not yet clear. We'll soon have more public information about that. Um, we do anticipate that uh, there will be continued issues of safety that we have to address in the long term. So assessing that, that uh, risk-benefit ratio will be very important on, an, on the basis of individual therapies. Nevertheless, the whole community, and myself included, are excited about the prospects of, of, uh, of these approaches really changing the course of disease for families with, the, with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Certainly if meaningful therapies are approved, the rationale for uh, earlier testing, in fact newborn testing, becomes much more pronounced. Uh, when we have uh, meaningful uh, therapies that can really address um, essentially all patients with Duchenne dystrophy, it will be a really important to identify them earlier. We had a conference today, we had a seminar today about uh, other challenges to diagnostics. The fact that the standard genetic analyses that we do from, from genomic DNA out of blood only detects about 93 to 95% of mutations. So we have to go other ways to find the mutations in somewhere between 5 and 7% of patients into muscle biopsy still and look at how the gene is organized. So on the one end we have to think about newborn screening and at the other end we have to think about finding those patients who are not detected by standardized or by, by easily available testing uh, approaches. So I think it's important for the, the neurology and neuromuscular communities to recognize that although uh, potential therapies might, one might reach approval even this summer, there are still uh, a lot of uh, boys with Duchenne dystrophy who won't be eligible for that off the bat. We have to uh, we have to still care for all those boys with great standards of care. That's where multidisciplinary clinics come in. And we also have to recognize there are lots of other trials that myself and other investigators are trying to do. We're uh, happy to recruit more patients to take part in these that are also meaningful approaches. But we, we haven't answered it for everybody yet. We still have a lot of work to do.